Hi everyone, I'm Cassidy and today we're talking about winter sewing. What is winter sewing? That is a great question. Winter sewing is a perfect way for people who live in zones one through seven to start their seeds. It saves on space, it helps seeds have a higher germination rate, and you also don't have to acclimate your seedlings to the outside because they are already outside. With acclimating seedlings outside, normally you have to take your trays from your indoor sewing, you have to take them outside, you have to carry them all outside for a number of days before they're ready to be outside fully during the night. And that, if you are starting a lot of seeds, that is a very tedious, time-consuming task that a lot of people don't have time to do. A winter sewing, you just avoid that step altogether. Winter sewing is also a great solution if you have a yard, but a small indoor space. If you have small children or just animals, like dogs that are cats that get into your potted plants, winter sowing is a great solution so that, you know, they're contained in their little greenhouses outside and your, your dog can't get into them, cat can't poop in them, and your kids also can't help you with them. Winter sowing is a great solution for not have enough indoor space, but still having a yard that you want to plant plants in. So today I'm actually going to walk you through step-by-step step how to do winter sowing. So step number one is that you want to start with your milk jugs. So you want to save containers from the store, like a milk jug. This one is opaque, also clear containers. Any container that the sun can get through, those are the type of containers you want to save if you want to do the free version. We'll go over doing a different version that costs money later, but for right now, if you want to do the free, cheap and easy version of winter sewing, the milk jug is the way to go. Also, the salad containers, they often come in clear rectangle square containers. Those work great. You know, in different grocery stores, you have different options for opaque or clear, clear containers. So just keep your eyes peeled for that. Start saving them now. You will need more than you think. Also ask your, your mom or your, your grandma, any family members really, your friends, to save theirs for you. I think even you know, for a small guardian, you could use 15. Say you start sweet peas in this, you're only going to start like three to four sweet pea seeds in one of these. Even for a small garden, you'd want you know, 10 to 15 milk jugs. So step number two, you're not going to use the lid. You can get rid of that. For step number two, what you want to do is before you cut this open is you want to drill your holes. So you want to drill holes in the bottom for a drainage. I also like to drill holes in the sides for some airflow. How I cut this in half is I actually drill holes to start where I want to cut. So I'll just do that right now. So I've just got, I've got my drill and then I have a drill bit set. You want to use not, not something like too small, but also not too big. You're just looking for drainage and for airflow you're not looking for i don't know gaping holes for things to get in this is the biggest hole that you'll have and that's plenty that's plenty for the for the rain and the snow to get into so i'm just going to put my drill bit in so like i said i'm going to start i'm going to start with the holes where i want to cut so so i found that the best place to cut these in half is just right where the handle ends so it actually has a line for you so i'm just going to drill here on either side of the handle so that when I cut it, I can get my, my snips into there, okay? I'm gonna do my airflow holes, so I'll just do one on each side. This is to help avoid algae growth. If we winter sewing, you will end up with algae growth, so this is just to help. So I've got airflow holes on all sides, and now I wanna do my drainage holes here on the bottom. Basically, when I'm putting the holes in, I just wanna think about like if water would pool anywhere and I want to put a hole. I just don't want soggy soil. That's how I did the holes. So that is your first step in getting your container ready. Step number three is we're going to cut it now. I just have my flower snips. I find that these work the best, better than scissors. So I'm just going to start where I put that hole and I'm just going to cut around. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to stop before it's fully cut in half. So I'm going to stop right at the handle at the second hole here. There we go. Now I just want to make sure it'll open well. Nice, look at that. Okay, so I basically have created a little lid that's still attached. Basically have a hinge here. If you do cut it all the way off on accident, you still use it. You just will have to tape it more. So step number three is that we're going to fill it with soil. So when you fill a winter sewing vessel with soil, you want to fill it about four inches. This is more than four inches, I'm guessing. So I probably want to fill about halfway. Okay, let's do that now. All right, so here we have our soil mix. This is our 
personal potting mix that we have done it has a compost that we've made. It also has some sheep's wool pellets that we rehydrated and mixed in to take the place of peat moss. And then the final thing is vermiculite. We have also added water to this. So you always, always, always want to add water before you plant seeds because oftentimes with seeds, you don't want them to be covered. You want them to have access to light. And if you wait to water your potting mix or your soil till after you've put the soil in and you put your seeds in they can float away or get covered and then they just really struggle to germinate but in the future once you have planted your seeds and your soil is drying out you want to try and bottom water which means that with this guy i would just because it has holes in the bottom i just take a tray with some water on it and stick it in and let the soil soak it up instead of trying to water from on top it's moist enough that i can't wring out water but it's definitely you know has water in it okay so i'm just gonna put my potty mix in here Okay, so this looks about right. So you can see my airflow holes are just right sitting right on the top, which is perfect. The airflow hole right here is just this right above the soil line. As the air comes in, it's just going to help maintain healthy soil and prevent algae growth. Okay, so that is your step number three. It's full of soil. And now you would just put your seeds in. So you just want to take your seed packet and you just want to read ahead. Okay, does this seed need light to germinate? If it needs light to germinate, you're just going to sprinkle your seeds on top and then you're going to take some vermiculite and you're just going to sprinkle that on top. And the vermiculite helps the soil stay moist. Okay, so it doesn't actually act as soil and cover the seed. It just helps keep the top of the soil from drying out where the seed is. And so it gives the seed a better chance of getting light, but also staying moist. If your seed packet says to like lightly cover soil, you'll sprinkle your seeds in. Then you'll grab another handful of your potting mix and then you'll, you know, you'll sprinkle it on top like that very gently and then very gently pat it down. That's how you do that. One of the things about winter sowing vessels is they're sitting outside exposed to the elements so they're exposed to a lot of water will definitely label it on the outside however there's a really high chance that that label will wash away or fade by the time you are ready to plant your seeds into the ground what i do is i just take a sharpie and i use a numbering system and then a spreadsheet i just put a number one on it and then on my spreadsheet i would put number one and then i write on the spreadsheet what i planted in here when i'm ready to plant these guys outside i can just open this up and be like oh it's vessel number one look at my spreadsheet oh, okay that was my sweet peas or whatever it was so that's just a helpful trick we'll also label it on the outside just a note on labeling labeling is one of the most important steps and it's often the step that people forget and I have been guilty of this myself many many times especially when it comes to variety I found so like I can label the type of plant then I like don't label the variety so I don't actually know what color it's going to be when it comes up so I highly recommend label 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 so we're going to move on to our next step I'm going to go wash my hands so I'm just going to take my sharpie make sure it's dry sharpies do not like writing on wet surfaces I'm just going to label this number one on the inside close it up so at this point what you want to do is you want to tape it close again and most people use duct tape that's what i've used in the past i don't have duct tape right now for some reason inside this packing tape i've never used this before i don't know if it would actually work we're going to try it but you probably want to use duct tape so the tricky part about closing these back up is this part around the handle ideally you would want to use just one strip of tape and tape it closed because of the odd shape of this container what happens is you're like running it long but then by the time you get you know over here the tape's up on this side because it's at an angle so you might have to use more than one piece so i always try and start right here at the handle and just sort of get into the contours and you want to make sure that you tape it really well because you don't want any air to escape from this area or let any cold this is basically you're sealing it shut again so that it can act as a greenhouse. Okay, I'm just gonna cut this and then, so I can already tell that I'm gonna need more. <laughs> and that this is definitely not working as well. Duct tape works super well. So I highly recommend you just use duct tape. This stuff is nice because it's clear. With duct tape, you have to just be uh, conscious of how much you're using because it does block light in this area. This stuff is nice because it's clear. You know, the question is, is this going to withstand, you know, rain and snow? Is it going to lose its stickiness? Duct tape does great. I mean, sometimes when it gets really cold, I have to go back out there and add more duct tape. This right here, this spot is what kind of what I'm talking about, where there's like this weird, you know, divot. And so the tape has a really hard time sticking. So I'd have to come in here with another piece of tape and fit it in and try to create the seal 
just so that, you know there's not all this air right here escaping because what you want ideally is you want to create a, a greenhouse type environment so the more like moisture you can trap within here the better so like you really want there to be you know water on the inside sort of in droplets running down creating sort of that moist steam type environment you know that greenhouses have and so you just want to create that sort of mimic that environment within your little greenhouse here so on these spots you just want to try and create as much of a seal as possible so you're not losing air from these areas so there you go so you got that and then i'm just going to write on here on the tape I'm just going to write number one and then say this was food Vecchia um, Gold Blitz. So there you have your little winter sewing vessel. All right, so the final step is that you're going to take this outside and you're going to put this in a place where it is fully exposed to rain and fully exposed to sun. You do not want to put this on a covered porch or under the eaves of your house, you know, somewhere very exposed. Because the whole point of this is that, you know, you want the rain and the snow to come through up here, but then you're also sort of creating this greenhouse environment so you're getting the best of both worlds where you're getting that freezing and thawing freezing and thawing but you're also trapping in moisture and, and warmth and so when the sun does come out and is shining on this it's going to get super warm inside and then the seeds will germinate because they've been super cold and now they're getting super warm and it's like oh my gosh the seeds are just going to think it's time that is why you do this method and not just like throw your seeds just directly in the garden to freeze and thaw freeze and thaw because they do need that extra heat once the sun decides to come out in order to actually germinate, which you don't get in the garden necessarily. The garden doesn't warm up fast enough. That's why you do this. Places outside, I always like to take it and just, you know, here in, <laughs> see how it's doing. So that's your winter sewing vessel all ready to go, hopefully with duct tape. You have this guy outside. It's super cold out. There's snow. You probably only need to check on this this like once a week. And the only reason you check on it is just to make sure it hasn't tipped over or it's not drying out for some weird reason. But if it's cold, it, it shouldn't. Sometimes where we live, it's really cold out, but it's sunny. So there's potential for it to dry out if there's sun. But if it's still, you know, in the below 30s, I just don't think it'll dry out. When it's cold, check on it once a week. Once it starts to warm up, though, you want to check on it probably every three days. And then when it really starts to get warm, like in April, somewhere between March and April, you want to check on it every day because these things can dry out super fast and you really don't want that to happen, especially before it's germinated. Once the seeds have germinated and they're growing and it dries out, it's not as big of a deal. If it dries out before it germinates, it just stunts the seed and it, it, it probably just isn't going to germinate. Before your seeds germinate, you really need to make sure that it stays moist all the time. That is big key. Once it's warm out, just start checking it every day. Once they have actually germinated in their little plants, if it's a frost hardy plant, so something like sweet peas, if it's frost hardy, you can open this guy up and leave it open. Even if it goes, dips below, you know, freezing a couple of nights, if it's like in the summer between 32, 28 degrees out, they'll be fine. Most likely they're great. If you're worried, you can always just leave it open and just put a little frost cloth on top. That's totally fine. If it's not a frost hardy plant, you want to try and keep this closed as long as possible until they like basically are trying to grow out the top and then you're, you're going to have to open it. And then hopefully by then they're ready to plant out into the yard. That is all I have for how you do winter sowing with a milk jug. So that's what I have this week for you guys for winter sowing. If you have any questions, just put it in the comments. And I'd love to hear other people's success stories and, and solutions to winter sowing in the comments as well. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel.